Today I have with us our super secret surprise that was revealed earlier, Mystery Anime Theater 3000, or as we like to call it, Matt 3K. Oh, okay, no one actually calls it that. George, <laughs> would you care to tell us a little bit about what exactly Mystery Anime Theater is? Uh, Mystery Anime Theater, um, for use for those of us who uh, used to come to Otakon back in like 99, 2000, early years, uh, Mystery Anime Theater was a evening event that would happen. Uh, basically, if you were familiar with the Mystery Science Theater show, we it was a group of all of us would come in and watch a live performance at the convention of some of our guys perform with uh, the original with Crow and Tom Servo and their unfortunate uh, victim have to sit through and watch terrible anime. And it was a great time. Um, the guys that originally did it after years finally you know, said it was time to hang up their hat. And they did, and then they came back for Otakon's 20th and did their did a 20-year, uh, a revival with the 20-year, and that was apparently it. Michael and I, being two of the uh, <laughs> crazy fans that we are, decided uh, we wanted to bring it back, and with uh, the convention being online, we thought it was a great time to actually uh, take a chance of doing it. Nice. Mike and Lizzie. What do you think was the worst anime the old show reviewed? Oh my God. That is a tough call. Um, and I say that because I don't remember all the names of them. I remember the commentary more. But I can tell you the one that had the big red dog in the middle of it and was interspliced with uh, live action puppetry, I'm pretty sure took the cake for me. Uh, both because it was that bad that poorly conceived, and honestly, the humor that they came up with was just so on point. Um, yeah, and I was gonna say, uh, yeah, wish you could have seen it. She, she's a newbie to the uh, to the world of anime and otaku dub. So, can you uh, introduce the uh, third person in the frame with you? Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, you, you mean you mean this guy? Uh, well, this is Gopla. Uh, you know, he's our. Uh, off-color, off-brand uh, Famicom of a Gundam, as it were. So, uh, yeah. H how you doing, Gun uh, Go? How you, how you feeling? He's on mute mode right now. He's a little shy. So <laughs> <laughs> He is very large. Do you have one of our smaller staffers inside him? Uh, you know, that's a great question. I don't know. Uh, did we shove somebody in there earlier? Okay, good. We... I was afraid we might have forgotten the first uh, test pilot. That could have been glad to hear. There's <laughs> all right, and last, I'd like to introduce Zach and Owen. Can you tell me a little bit about yourselves and your friend there? Yeah, um, this is Hackamon. Say hi, Hackamon. Hi, Hackamon. No, you dummy. <laughs> uh, um, yeah, no, it's been a great time puppeteering, you know, this little guy. He's got lots of little movements and whatnot. Yeah, and it, it, it's, it's been a pleasure working with, uh, working with Hackamon and uh, Gunpla. I'm, uh, I, I did a lot of the, uh, the video editing on the project, and I got to say, they were uh, very easy to work with. Um, although I will say, when I, I had concerns about the green screen elements, because... Uh, Hackamon's uh, coloration here is a little a little close to green, but uh, we worked through it with wardrobe and uh, and things worked out all right. What's different about this iteration of Mystery Anime Theater three thousand compared to the past ones? With, with with this particular iteration, because we were so uh, astonished by the work that was done before us, we didn't want to do something that was gonna in any way, shape or form, step on the toes of those who came before us. They really paved the way with this. This was their baby. And we wanted to do something kind of in that new Star Trek sort of way, right? Uh, we wanted to be something that was in the same sort of vein, but that could in its own right uh, stand without necessarily being you know, compared to positively or negatively to the great work that has already been done. So with our show, uh, we're coming from a slightly different premise uh, rather than carrying a little bit with, you know, Obviously, with Crow and Tom Servo, we have our new guys here who have joined me. Uh, and we've made this more of a focus on uh, really characters who are anime-driven. Uh, my character, 
Mike Good Guy is quite literally the good guy anime geek that we all love, that we all are represented by. Uh, and, uh, you know, I think that this, the pandemic has actually given us the storyline, right? It, it's the idea of somebody who misses the con and thinks the con is still happening, but is too flighty to realize that they canceled it. So what better person to be uh, kidnapped for those purposes uh, of experimentation and world global domination? Mike and I have been talking about this, um, doing something like this since, well, before, after the Mystery Anime Theater had stopped the first time, and we sat there and said, man, that would be really awesome to uh, to bring back or to see if we could get, you know, see if any of the guys from that other group wanted to do it and we'd, you know, see if we could help them out. And then they did the 20th and pretty much, from my understanding, we were kind of like, well, you know, we're running, we're out of steam at this point. We got other things to do. And like I said, we were we were very much wanting to do this, bring it back. We think we really felt like every year we come to Otakon, we kind of felt like after it was over, we were like something seems like it's missing, and we suddenly realized it's it's Mr. Anime Theater. It was it was a big piece of like the Friday evening um, lineup, and so this is this is we're really we really excited to have a chance to actually get to bring back something that we really loved, and hopefully influence and inspire another whole generation of fans to maybe in 20 years be just as crazy as us during a pandemic and film this thing <laughs> for me personally i'm actually really thrilled you guys are doing this because i actually used to work for the otakon game show which itself also phased out a few years ago after running almost 15 years on its own right so getting to see one of the classic standby things you think of when you think of Otakon coming back, it's a big deal. What motivated you all to try to bring back this nostalgia? I would say it has a lot to do with, uh, George kind of nailed it before, it's that feeling of something missing. This was such a formative experience for so many of us. I mean, yeah, so to, to date myself, my first Otakon was 2000, and I was 14 years old. And I came for one day and it was Friday. And I remember seeing Mystery Anime Theater. And that was one of the things that hooked me on coming to this convention. So for me, being able to do something in, in reviving that for a whole nother generation of people, uh, to bring back something that had that much of an influence on me, uh, and I know it had that sort of influence on several of us, uh, that I think is really one of the biggest driving factors. This was just, it's so much fun. Why not want to share it? And luckily for us, we are, uh, our team here is a really strong, uh, you know, crack shot team of artists and technologists. Uh, I work in performing arts. George uh, works in performing arts. Uh, Owen has had performing arts experience and Zach works professionally in, in video. So, you know, you bring the group of us together and then you have someone who's kind enough to puppet a giant, something pretty <laughs> magical. You know? Lizzie's the, awesome. Lizzie's our financial advisor. <laughs> accurate accurate ah is that why it's not made of real gundanium exactly yeah. um i said i wanted to go go out the street and get it and she said no all right so this question is for all of you from top to bottom please what exactly makes bad anime so addictive oh we should ask jordan that i don't like anime so I, I, okay, I'll feel this one. Um, so <laughs> I don't really watch anime. This is a very new experience for me. But I think, thank you. I think that there are some <laughs> universalities to like what makes something bad, whether it's the production values, or you can tell that the people doing the writing or the animation are like 100% mailing it in. And it, it shows through. And like it happens a lot in music as well. But specifically for poorly animated things, you can just tell when they just are just so close to giving up. You can tell that they're just saying, hey, well, you know, we're getting paid, so whatever. And then, you know, sure enough, it turns out it's like, hey, let's make a sequel. And then you say to yourself, why? <laughs> <laughs> Don't give away all the secrets yet. <laughs> Uh, they cannot replicate this this fake Boston sports accent. Thank you. <laughs> um, 
I would say one of the things that really drives it home for it, it, there, there's a, a an experience like you know a shared experience that we all go through when we've seen bad shows, right? We've all had those moments where we've watched something and we've rolled our eyes at it, and we've been like, "Man, if I only had a few people to like share my pain with." And in some weird way, there, there's there's community that comes in that. Um, I think that's why mystery science theater and mystery anime theater and, and shows of that sort, and even riff tracks now, that's why it's so successful because, you know, we all want to be able to share in, in the humor of what we see in the, in the ridicule of it. There's something fun and, and jovial and being able to Josh about it. No pun intended. Ah, uh, uh, yes. You mean on. Stockholm syndrome. Yes. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I would say to second what Mike was saying with it, it, it really builds a sense of community. One of the first things we did when we approached the project was to sit down and all of us separately watch uh, the anime and record ourselves riffing on it. And although we all had slightly different jokes and we had jokes that were unique to our own viewing, we all still riffed over the same sections. And I think that really just touches on there's a universal badness that also kind of goes so far off the spectrum, it starts to be good because it's a shared experience. Um, so I would say that, you know, uh, the one thing that unites all bad anime is that they're all kind of bad in the same ways. Um, and it's something we all can kind of uh, riff on together. In video operations, um, for many years, we, also, we would do, uh, for the late night, like uh, plus 18 material, and some of that stuff was definitely very, uh, very edgy, and a lot. And, and we had offer, and there were people to come in there to watch this thing because it was something that they all could share with each other and make fun of. But you'd sit, we'd. There was one year when um, we were back when we were back in Baltimore. Our office, our uh, department was right next to one of the video rooms, and we heard this loud disturbance in there. And the person at the time that was in charge of the department was like, the heck's going on in there? So we all, a group of us all went over there, opened up. They were riffing this movie right and left because it was just, it was just so bad, but it created this unity. All these people who did not really know each other at our convention were all sitting there just shouting out different jokes and someone across the room would start shouting out. It was just this unity that was created. And I think that's, that's one of the reasons why bad anime is 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 somewhat fun and acceptable in some ways. Um, then there's some bad anime that is just so bad that well, you'll see. <laughs> I think that's all the time we have. So if you guys would like to plug your show one last time, we think that you know we've got a good amount of referential humor. We got a you know some old stuff, some new stuff, uh, and we think there'll be a good mix uh, for our entire audience to really enjoy uh, the magic of what mystery anime theater is and. Uh, you know, obviously, we hope that we've uh, done well by our predecessors. So it's uh, it's going to be a real yeah. good time. Thanks for coming out in advance. And I'm looking forward to seeing you all later. <laughs> Don't trust him. He's a mad. <laughs> <laughs> what? He's got adorable eyes. What? Why can't you trust him? I'm shifting. <laughs> 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 all right, folks. Thank you.